Welcome to the Countdown Abitur Radio Club's Build-A-Thon program, and this is to introduce to our members project number three. When we started the program at the beginning of the year, we set out to deliver three projects. The first was to build an NFED half-wave antenna. The second was the ADX, a digital transceiver. And now for the third project in the series, a QRP antenna tuning unit. Now here's a close look at it. You can see it's a fairly attractive unit housed in an ABS housing and well presented. So how does it work? What's the project about? Let's take a look. To demonstrate the use of an ATU, I've connected a non-resin antenna through my MFJ969 to highlight how an ATU is able to tune that antenna and illustrate the impact using the analog SWR meter. Because we're using QRP, that particular meter doesn't show the power levels particularly well, so I've connected it to the barber watt to get a more accurate reading, and the power source that I'm using, or the RS source that I'm using for this, is the ADX, the kit that we built in project number two. For this demonstration, I have my 20 and 50 meter dipole feeding in to the large uh, roller inductor antenna matching unit, which has a cross needle SWR meter. Now, whilst this unit can measure up to 300 watts, it's not particularly accurate in terms of its power readings down at uh, QRP power. So I've got the barber watt sitting here, which will give us a much more accurate uh, power out reading, as well as a digital SWR reading, and it connects through to the ADX that's sitting over here. Now, the switch or the area of interest is going to be this particular band selector here. You can see at the moment I've got it on bypass. This switch enables me to connect either one or two antennas, a long wire antenna or into the dummy load. In this case, I'm on bypass going in through coax number two, which effectively means the ATU is not being used. It's connected straight through to the antenna. So when I power down or when I power up, you can see here that the SWR, which is reflected by the point of intersection of these two needles over here, is absolutely in an unusual range. And if you look down here, it's about eight to one. Um, for, and I'm only getting about 1.5 uh, watts out on 40 meters. So not a clearly a good situation. Now I've actually tuned the, uh, the antenna. I just switched it across to the ATU. And you can see now having tuned it, um, I now have an SWR of 1.14 to 1. You can see the cross intersection here involves virtually no movement at all of the reflected power. So we've got pretty much close to a perfect match and that makes it perfectly usable on 40 meters. Now, not necessarily the most um, efficient 40 meter antenna, but it certainly will enable me to use the, the dipole in the limited space that I have for operation on 40 meters. Now the way you tune an ATU to match it to a particular antenna is you first select the inductance that you need and then you adjust the two capacitance on both the transmit and the antenna side till you get a perfect match. Now in this situation here I've actually just matched that. Uh, that's a beautiful match. You can see there the power is coming up. If we look, take a look at the uh, um, what you can see putting out 3.2 watts with an SWR of 1.05. So almost a bang on, uh, on perfect match. Now if I adjust the tune here, you can see the SWR coming up and there is a sweet spot sitting right down there at the, uh, the bottom. So it's a matter of adjusting both of the um, both of those uh, capacitors, once you set the inductance in the right zone, see if I bring the inductance up here, it changes as well. So it's a matter of balancing out all of the, the inductance and the two capacitances until you achieve that, uh, that perfect match. Now clearly this is a little bit big to take with us out into the field, so introducing the Cowtown um, Buildathon project number three, which is going to be this little fellow. It's a QRP antenna matching unit. It does exactly the same job that the, the larger unit does here. You have a central switched inductor in which you select the amount of inductance you wish to use. Then you have two capacitors to be able to, uh, to tune and optimize the, uh, the characteristics to get the perfect match on your antenna. Now I'll just make a couple of changes here and we'll set this up and I'll show you how this works. So the setup that we're going to use for the next section is shown in this particular chart here. Now what I've done in this case is I've replaced the, uh, the little unit that was just passing from straight through out to the antenna with the, uh, the QRP ATU unit. Now the unit connects from here back through into the, to be able to watch and use the, uh, the SWR meter here, 
back through into the Barber Watt to get a far more uh, uh, accurate reading, through into the ADX sitting over here. And as I'll just put it into uh, band mode, you can see here I'm currently on the on the 40 meter band. Let's just lock that in. And um, we are with 40 meters on FT8. So at this point in time, we switch to bypass, bypass over here. So what we're reading at the moment is the raw antenna coming in here on 40 meters. When I key down, you can see here quite unusable over eight SWR, the needle crosses right across to the left hand side there. So unusable in that particular situation. Now let's put the ATU into, into play and the, the first thing I do is I look to the chart up here. I'm on 40 metres, so it's recommending that the starting point is to switch in the amount of inductance which is available when you go to the E position on the inductor switch. Um, I'll also switch it to tune, and I'll just illustrate it. I'll just move it off because I've just tuned it. So when I power down, you can see the red SWR light comes on, indicating that I have an SWR which is too high. I then adjust the, uh, the the indicator here, or sorry, the capacitance, and you can see there that the light, the SWR light, this little LED here, extinguishes, indicating that that's the best possible SWR. And you can see here that there's virtually no no uh, reading. Let me just come and zoom in on that. You can see here when I key down, there's virtually no movement whatsoever in the SWR switch, and sorry, the SWR meter. And when I look at the barber watt. You can see here I'm putting up 2.9 watts with an SWR of 1.03. So having tuned the uh, the antenna, let's just zoom out a little bit here. Uh, having tuned the antenna, I now just switch to operate mode and um, we're good to go. Now the SWR has jumped up a little bit here um, because we're actually measuring um, a whole stack of other things that are in there. Uh, whereas previously with the, the measurement here is actually at this point, not all the way back through the, uh, the wiring to this particular location here. But effectively, um, we can now, um, just let me just zoom in again, with the, uh, with the meter set here, you can see, I'll just quickly go through that again, put it into tune, tune for minimum SWR, which is just located there. Also, very fine adjustment that we have there and there we have a virtual perfect match and we're now able to use that antenna on 40 meters i just wanted to show another example using the 30 meter band you can see here that the adx is tuned to 30 meters just lock that in and we're on 30 meters on ft8 um, and because the 30 meter band is not an integer multiplier of the resonant frequency that the antenna is cut for because this is cut for 20 and 15 meters. So we go through exactly the same situation. You can see on bypass here, both, uh, both units are on bypass. When I key down, we have an SWR, which is almost at seven. Just look across here, seven, and you can see that the needle, the reflection needle comes right up here. The intersection point is well and truly into the unusable range. So now let's switch across to the ATU. I'll just tune off a little bit here. And I've indicated that we're on 30 meters, so that's the starting point should be around the, uh, the 10 megahertz, which is selection switch position D on the inductor. Let's put it into tune. You can see the LED comes on. Let me just zoom in on that. Let's get a closer look at that as we, uh, as we do the tuning. Um, put it in on tune and I'm coming around looking for that dip. There's the dip there and you can see that the SWR has dropped down to almost almost one to nothing. One point looking over here, 1.07 and you can see the reflected, let me get the reflection needle up over on the, uh, uh, there we go, in focus. The reflected S needle power meter is actually hardly moving at all. So we have a perfect match for operation on 30 meters. And so we're now able to use that antenna on 30 meters. Now there's a lot of equipment used during those demonstrations, but in practical terms, you simply need to connect the ATU to your radio transmitter and use the LED SWR indicator as the indication as to when you successfully tuned your non-resonant antenna. So let's recap. The ATU that we're going to build is a practical addition and complements projects one and two extremely well. It provides a high frequency antenna tuning unit capable of supporting the QRP radios up to about 10 watts maximum. 
It's pocket sized, it's fit for purpose, and it really does work quite well. It utilizes a T matching network, which consists of the switched inductor and two variable capacitors. The built-in SWR indicator works well, as you've seen in the demonstration, to indicate the point at which the antenna is tuned. Now, the Cowtown kit incorporates an antenna tuning unit bypass switch, the templates to correctly facilitate the drilling and placement of components, as well as the overlay. I'll be producing a detailed construction manual in very similar to the, uh, the style that we use for the ADX, and it also corrects all the errors with the original Chinese kit. Now, Carol, KP4MD, did an excellent video on small QRP antenna tuning units. She spoke specifically about this particular unit, the problems with it, and the things that you needed to do to correct it. I encourage you to take a look at that video, and we've incorporated all those corrections into the Cowtown build. As with all things, the project is built in stages. We start off by building the smaller circuit board, which is the SWR indicator and the operate or tune switch. We then build the multi-tapped uh, inductor and then attach that inductor to the selector switch. We drill holes in the, uh, in the case. We then mount the components in the case before moving on, attaching the decal and making the unit uh, complete. Perhaps the most challenging aspect of the build is constructing the 12 tap inductor and attaching that to the switch. But for those that have been involved in the earlier projects, if you can build a low pass filter and wind your toroid, it's just a matter of patience whilst you build it. But in the end, you end up with a very nice little unit. It's very practical and it works well.